All right, ready to run a script. What? Can't run it recursively? Not supported in PixInsight? What's going on here? Let's talk about processes and scripts. Welcome to SETI Astro. I think everyone's familiar with where to find processes. They're here under process, and then they're all in all process, or scripts under scripts. I'm sure plenty of you use the way to batch, pre-processing, maybe something out of Jurgen's toolbox, or various other utilities. But let's let's go into what these are and how to use them. As I know that was never really spelled out for me when I was starting with PixInsight. Now I want to say I'm a Windows user. So some of this is going to be different for Mac or Linux users. But here's the main PixInsight program file. Processes are, in, are actually this bin folder here. And you'll notice these are all DLL files. They're all system files. So it's easy to think of PixInsight as its own mini operating system. That's why it has a desktop that you can double click, you can drag icons around on it. And that system uses all these different system files in order to tell it how it can actually operate. So processes are actually part of the system that gets incorporated within PixInsight. Scripts, on the other hand, are in this SRC file and in scripts. And you may have some standalone ones or some ones in folders. Either way, these are just, these are just sets of text like this. Here's, here's the actual script for my narrowband to RGB star script. It's, it's just a bunch of text to tell PixInsight what to open, how to open it, any value, variables that need to be put in there, what image to apply it to, and, and close it out. So it is almost like, well, it's exactly like you opening process one, changing the parameters how you like it, applying that to the image. Opening process two, changing the parameters how you like it, applying that to the image. On and on and on until the script is done. It's just scripting out what system processes PixInsight's going to utilize. So because of that, how we have to implement them as a user are different between the two. So I have open here just curves transformation. So this is a process. This is part of the system in PixInsight. It has a preview button. Everybody knows the preview button. Uh, if you don't know, you can hit control and drag to like zoom in on the preview, um, which, which is al al always handy. But down here, you also have Two other buttons new instance and apply the new instance really mean, just means you could either drag it to any of your windows that you may have open and drop it and it'll apply that curves transformation or the apply button in this case whatever your last active window was it's just going to apply it to that particular window so I have two uh, windows open and you can see, I'll just put some curves on. I can go ahead and drag the blue thing to the one in the back and it's going to apply it to that one. Or here was the last one we had open. You could just hit the triangle and it'll apply it to that one. That's how processes work. The other thing with the process is you could always just drag that instance off, make it its own process icon and it's really just a, a shortcut, if you look at the code, of how it should apply the curves process. It just tells it the list of variables that were set in that process. So that way when you drag and drop this thing onto another image, it just opens that process up, applies the variables, and uh, finishes it. That is different than how scripts work. If you notice, you double click that icon, the actual process opens. Scripts are completely different. Now I have opened my uh, beta version of my statistical stretch model. It's a script. So what that's doing is it's opening this dialog and it's waiting on user input within that dialog in order for PixInsight to move forward. That's why you can't click or 
do anything outside of a script. It's waiting on the user to provide it some guidance as it's trying to run that text file. So in this case, you know, you can select the, the view you want and hit execute, and then it's gonna go through that, that big list of instructions, that scripted list out, and, and run it. And then you have to exit out of the script if it doesn't automatically exit for you to uh, see what was done. A thing I get questions on a lot that my scripts don't work or, or something of that matter is uh, people try to drag that blue triangle off and just drop it on an image like you would with a process. And you can see it says uh, it attempted to execute a script instance recursively. It's not supported. What that's really telling you is when you try to drop that onto an image, it's really just trying to run the script again within the script. It's recursively trying to call the script. And that's that's just not supported. So that's not how you apply scripts to images. There's always going to be some kind of an execute button or a green check button, something like that. It'll be never dragging that blue icon off onto the image. What that blue kind icon does allow you to do is drop a process icon on the image for that script. Okay, let's say you did drag off one of these scripts on there. I have two other ones just for some other examples. Depending on how the script is written, when you double click it, different things can happen. There are always going to be this dialog that comes up that says script. Now some scripts from this window allow you to run the script directly on any of these images. So my star script, star stretch script is one of them. I could drag the triangle off on an image and it's gonna go ahead and execute on it. It could also do the same thing from this blue square button. It'll apply to the active window. This circle is trying to run the script in a global context. Very few scripts could be ran in a global context since most scripts are trying to manipulate one of the images. And in a global context, it's run, reading files and manipulating things globally in PixInsight without any direct pointers pointing directly to any of these images. So in this case, when I tried to run it in a global setting, it looked like nothing happened. But over in the console, it'll say something like, star stretch couldn't be run in a, in a global context. So a lot of the time that blue circle won't ever be able to be utilized for, for scripts. Now, if the script is coded in such a way that uh, dragging the blue triangle off or hitting the blue square will run the script on that image, it also means that just dropping the icon directly onto the image will allow it to run the script as well. Now let's look at a, a different script I have, narrowband RGB stars. This takes two or three inputs in order to run. So right now in its parameters here, those are just blank because it doesn't know what it's pointing to. So if you try to run the script here, it's just gonna pull up the dialog the normal script dialog. And here is where you're gonna to have to put in your various images that you want to actually apply the script to. And again, you're gonna to have to hit the execute button or in other scripts, maybe a green check or a run, something like that. But dragging this blue icon off, you're gonna get that error again, that it's trying to run the script recursively. So I have another example, Graxpert which could actually be found in Jurgen's toolbox here, uh, the, the Graxpert script. This one does have a global context that can run in. If you click the global one on here, it's going to actually pull the script back up for you to allow manipulation with the images and stuff. The reason that this one allows that is now with the image selected, it's gonna go ahead and save a temporary file of it it's going to manipulate that file in the background by calling up the Graxpert program itself. And then it's going to tell 
PixInsight to go ahead and open that file on top of whatever image you have in there and it actually just uses a piece of pixel math in order to do that. So Graxbird is one of those scripts where it will run from a global context by pulling up the dialog. Otherwise, you can just apply it with the blue square for whatever active window you have open or the blue triangle from there if you want to select one in the background. And last thing that I was never told and just recently saw and it really blew my mind and made me a little upset for some wasted time is if you have a process icon like here's my star exterminator one and you change something in there and you want to save that new process icon what I've always been doing is making a new process icon deleting the old one and going that route um, you don't need to do that you could just drag and drop right on top the dang thing and it goes do you want to replace it and you could say yes and now it saved the new settings in the in the icon um, small thing i had never seen it before and i feel like i wasted a bunch of time making new icons and deleting old icons um, and then when you're done be sure you save all your icons that you want uh, so you could just open them up quickly again i hope uh, i hope this helps somebody these were a lot of little things that nobody taught me when i was getting going on pixinsight please comment like and subscribe